Amen. Thank you, Rachel and Brother Buddy. Good song service. You have your Bibles with you this morning. Turn with me over to Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter 1. We'll be looking at verses 9 through 21. Daniel, chapter 1. Verses 19, 9 through 21. As you look at this passage, starting with verse 9, I want to give you some background. And I'm laying a background for the message this morning. The title of the message is Daniel's Do or Die Decision. Daniel's do or die decision. As we start in our, our text this morning, God had uh, brought Daniel into favor and love with the prince of the unit. And the prince of the unit said to Daniel, I'm afraid that, uh, that uh, the king has appointed you to eat the meat from his table and to drink the wine. For he wants to see that you will look fresh and fleshly when he when he brings you when we bring you to him. And the eunuch said to them, If you don't eat of the meat and drink of the wine of the king, you're going to put me in danger with the king. In other words, I'm going to lose my head. But in verse 11, Daniel says to Melzar, who was the prince of the eunuchs, and the king had set him over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And he said, uh, I want to prove you uh, for ten days, Daniel said, and let, let you give us pulps to eat and water to drink. Now you see, the king had already told the chief of the units, the prince of the units, to give them meat from his table and the wine. And then Daniel was saying in verse 13, that uh, our countenance be looked upon before you and the countenance of the other children that eat from the table of the king. And you will see what you see. If it's not better than the other children, then you can deal with us. And in verse 17, as for these four children, God had given them knowledge and skill and all the learning and all the wisdom. And Daniel had an understanding of the visions and the dreams. And at the end of the, the days, the king uh, said, bring those four Hebrews to me. And so they brought Daniel, Hananiah, and Mishael, and Azariah. And they stood before the king. In verse 20, in all, in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than the magicians and the astrologers and all that were in the kingdom. And notice in verse 21, and Daniel continued along in the first year of King Cyrus. And that's to give you a little bit of a background, paving the way for the message, Daniel's do or die decision. Now we all know that our lives are filled uh, with crises and decisions. We have, uh, we have right decisions, wrong decisions, uh, high roads, low roads, and, and almost there's always in our lifetime there's a fork in the road. 
And where we are today, folks, depends on the turn in the road that we took yesterday. And God has largely made the destiny of uh, determining decisions of our lives to be made in the youth days of our lives. Practically every life-altering decision, if you'll think about it now, has been made in our youth years. Most people, now there be a few that didn't, but most people will accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior when they are in their youth years. And whether a man is a Christian or not, most of the time is decided when he was a child. The friends we choose, the life companion that we're going to uh, marry, I've been knowing her since the youth years, seventh grade. <laughs> I get what the 13 years old. The habits we acquire, the vocation that we follow, almost all the decisions in our lives are made in the youth years. Now I'll say one thing. I didn't have any idea that I was going to be a preacher and a pastor when I was a, a youth. Lord, I was far from it. You don't believe that, go to my home church and talk to some of those older folks that's still there. They'll let you know right quick what kind of demon that I was <laughs> there in church. I guess that's why the Lord saved me and called me to preach. But mostly in verse 21 of our text, that's the last verse in chapter 1, that states that Daniel was still flourishing in the first year of King Cyrus. Now, in the first part of, of chapter 1 of Daniel, we are in 605 B.C. And then when we come to the first year of Cyrus, we are in 536 B.C., which is 70 years later. And all through that time, Daniel had been a prophet through those years. And at the age of 90, when it was possibly that he was thrown into the lion's den, he was still true to the Lord God that he served. But that commitment was made. And effectively. He made his choice. And trust the Lord. When he was in his youth years. Now these choices. Most of the time are difficult. Now this young man Daniel. And his three companions. Were to be fed the meat from the king's table. And they were to drink of the wine from the king's table. Now it automatically pops into my mind, or maybe your mind, why would anyone object from eating from the king's table? Why would anyone object to eating the meat that the king had provided, that he ate, and also the wine that he drank? That, 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 word, that meant that they were wined and dined as princes. Sons of the king himself. Why would anyone object to that? It was the custom in that time of ancient Babylonians that those who were counselors around the throne of the king were to be fed from the king's table. That was the way that they were trained and it was the custom of the land for them to be fashioned, to fashion their lives according to the rule of the kingdom. And again, I think, well, why would anyone object to that? Well, this old saying that when you're in Rome, we do as the Romans do. And when you're in Babylon, uh, we do as the Babylonians do. We follow the customs, the fashions of the day, and of the day and age that we live in. But as I look at Daniel in this first chapter, he is a great example, folks, of all of us who are children of God to follow the example of Daniel. And let's just see what Daniel has to say about this. The king said, you're going to eat of my meat, you're going to drink of my drink, and I'm going to turn, I'll say more back to this in a moment, but I'm going to turn you in to Chaldeans. I'm going to make you forget your God. I'm going to make you forget your memories of your families that, uh, that taught you uh, the things of God. And the first thing I want you to know was Daniel's decision was religious. Daniel's decision was with the king's program was to
from the worship of their homeland and from the love of their faith and from where they, they, they were to be introduced into a religion of idolatry and of the Chaldeans. And for this purpose, what did the king do? Well, he changed the name of Daniel to Belshazzar. He changed the name of Hananiah to Shadrach. He changed the name of, of Mishael to Meshach. And again, he changed the name of Azariah to Abednego. And the reason for this whole process was to make them to forget the Lord God that they had served. You see, they, were, they grew up in a family that taught them the ways of God. And these four Hebrew young men were dedicated, were committed to the Lord God. They were not going to be made into Chaldeans. They were not going to be a, a way a, a molded into the things that the king wanted them. They said, we will not commit to what you want us to be committed to. This meat that they were to eat and the wine they were to drink was pointing them to adultery, adulterers, and Chaldeans. Now, you must understand this. Babylon was a city dedicated uh, by religiosity of the king of Belmoradoc. I got that Hebrew right. And, and every part of the city life centered around the exaltation and worship of that heavenly, of that uh, false deity. Look at what the scripture says. Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine that he drank. In other words, he refused to be melted down into just another Chaldean. He refused to forget the Lord God and the faith of his fathers. He remembered the people and to, to the, the, that God had made the promises to. He remembered the law of Moses and of those Levitical rites concerning clean and unclean. And he proposed in his heart that he had rather die than fail in the faith and turn aside from the true worship of the Lord God. This is why I say that Daniel's decision was religious. I say that any ultimate decision that really changes life, changes our lives, is religious. If it's not religious, it's temporary and without doubt. Daniel proposed in his heart, the Bible says, it was a decision he made deep down in his soul. He resolved to obey God and not man. And I want to count there just for a second. We need to do the same thing that Daniel did. We need to resolve in our lives. We're not going to obey man. We're going to obey the Lord God. And I was thinking about this last night as I was trying to go to sleep. Now, the, uh, the Supreme Court tells us that same-sex marriage is all right. And they're going to say we must accept that. And I'm going to tell you something. We ought to be Daniels. We will not compromise. We will not go along with what you're saying. Because the Bible says that the uh, marriage is between a man and a woman. And no matter what the, the, uh, the uh, Supreme Court says, we are going to serve God and not serve man. God's Word was everything to them. The customs and passions and social pressures meant nothing uh, to them. The three, four Hebrew captives could, could burn, but they wouldn't turn. They could die, but they would not deny the Lord God. It was to God and Him alone that they yielded their lives. If you don't get anything else out of this message today, I want you to hear this. To the Lord God alone. It's where we are to yield our lives. We have so many people yielding their lives to the devil today. You can see it when on the television news. You see it, everything happening down in Memphis. They're, they're attacking the elderly people and beating them almost to death. You can see all these things happening. But let me tell you something. We are to yield our lives to God and God alone. So his, his decision was religious. Secondly, Daniel's decision was made with love, with a loving spirit. Now I want you to, have to grab a hold of you. The decision that Daniel made was made with a loving spirit. When Daniel made the decision not to defile himself with the unclean meat and wine off the idols, he was lovable and he was gracious and he was sincere uh, in his decision. The scripture says that God brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Now, Daniel was not only a fine young man, but he was not only determined that he was committed to stay with the Lord God, but he was also lovable and gracious 
and his determination. And I wish to God that all of us would serve him like Daniel. Listen, of all people in the world, we ought to be gracious. We ought to be lovable. We ought to be kind. We ought to be generous. And this is something I think that all of us need to check ourselves by sometime. We need to be kind in our lives, gracious in our lives, and also be determined to be lovable. And, and it ought to be God's people who love him the most. We ought to be the ones doing that. You know, there's a thousand ways to say a thing, and there's another thousand ways to do a thing. But if we love God, and we are committed our lives to him, we need to remember we're living in a corrupt world among ungodly people. And they said we're living in an ungodly world and, 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 and corrupt people. How vital it is that what we do, and we do generously, kindly, and sweetly. We ought to always be courteous in our protest, lovable in our religious determination. Sometimes I have a problem with that. I don't know whether you do or not, but sometimes I have to step back and say, whoa, Jackie, take it easy just a minute. And I mean, it gets next to me sometimes. But, but when I read about Daniel, Daniel didn't let this thing bother him. He just said, I'm committed to the Lord God. I'm going to stay with him. If I die, I die. I'll still be with God. I'm, not, I'm yielded to him. And that's the same decision, folks, that we need to do in our lives today is to be yielded to God and nothing else matters. Daniel made a great decision in his heart and graciously stuck to that purpose. You know, we say we believe certain things. We ought to stick to it. We say we're convicted about certain things. We ought to stick to it. People are trying to change the Word of God. People are trying to change the churches uh, to what we have been taught down through the years, trying to change all those things. And we should be as Daniels. We are committed to the Word of God. We are committed to the Lord God, and we will not change. You know, God intervened in behalf of Daniel. It was the Lord himself who brought Daniel into favor and tender love of the prince of the, of the, of the unit on whom the king had given him the responsibility to educate those four young Hebrews. And I know that God will never let anyone down who places his trust in him and who graciously gives himself to that dedication. God clears the way and he intervenes, and he will see us through. You know, when a young person, boy or girl, when a man or woman gives himself or herself with great love, devotion, kindness, the humi and humility of spirit to work for Christ, God will intervene on our behalf. You see, God saw Daniel. He heard Daniel when he told the unit he wasn't going to drink that, eat that meat and drink that wine, and God made the decision right then, I'm going to intervene. What did he do? He turned the unit around that he loved Daniel that he saw him through that he didn't have to uh, partake of that you know what I'm going to say something else they eat the, the pup and they drink water and then when the king brought them before him they were much healthier than all those others who had to eat the meat and drank the wine you see, God intervened in the decision that Daniel made. And folks, God, he will intervene with us. And that we must stay true to the word of God. We must not back up from it. If it's what God's word says, we need to stand on it. We need to back, back our heads. I said one time, we need to put a hard hat on, back our ears, and go to work. Because we're going to stay with this word of God. People are trying to change it, folks, today. But I'm going to tell you something. As long as I'm president, president. I'm a, hey, I'm going to be president of the United States one of these days, I guess. As long as I'm pastor of the Fairview Baptist Church, we'll stay true to the word of God. We will not compromise it. We will not back away from it. Whatever God says, that's what it's going to be. We're going to be Daniels. I think it will be a cry for us. We are Daniels at Fairview Baptist Church. We make the decision that we're going to stay true to the Lord God. And then thirdly, and listen to this. Daniel's decision was put to the test. If you have faith in the Lord, it's going to be tried. You listen to me now. It's going to be tried. I mean, you can count on it. There's no, there is 
no one who believes in the Lord God. trials that's going to pop up. That testing will inevitably be, will inevitably come sometime, somewhere. What did Daniel say? Take away this food. Take away the wine. Let us eat pulse and drink water. Try us. And at the end of the period of trial, look at us and see if our faith has not been confirmed from heaven. Try us. And in the face of our inevitable trials, let us be no less courageous and unafraid. Let us not be afraid to stand on the word of God. If all the Baptists turn against the word, let us not be afraid to stand on the word of God. Let us not be afraid to say, God, like Daniel would, we will not compromise. We will not partake of the things of the meat and the wine of the king. God clears the way, and he will intervene and see us through. All of us will go through the trials. We shouldn't be afraid. We shouldn't even be reluctant. Whatever trial, we have committed our hearts to God. Here is where we stand. No compromise. For us to be in our hearts, spirit cowards, in the spirit cowards, and afraid of fiery trials is not worthy of our heavenly commitment. I want to close with this. All of us face trials in our journey of life. Let us not be afraid. When it comes, we'll not walk by ourselves. Picture this. They threw the three young men into the fiery furnace. Seven times hotter than normal. And when the king came down to look, he said, did we not throw three into that fiery furnace? Yeah, king, that's what we did. Well, there's four in there. God intervened. And not a hair on their head was seized. Not a smell of, of uh, uh, burn of on their clothes. God intervened. And also, look at the example of Joseph, who found himself in the dungeon down in Egypt for a decision he made to stay true to the Lord God. Potiphar's wife uh, tried to make him uh, commit adultery. And, and, and Joseph said, I will not. I am yielded to God. Just, as, just like Daniel said he was. And he did not. But God saw him through that mess. He became one of the top men in the kingdom. We need to do as Daniel did. Who refused to defile himself with the king's meat. And wine, like wine, and he found himself in the line. Now, I thought about that last night. There he was, possibly 90 years old. And they threw him in there with all those lines. And not one line attacked him. Not one. God intervened. Do it as Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah did it, who rather be thrown in the fiery furnace than deny, deny their faith. God walked them through the ferocious fire. God will never forsake us. He will see us through. But if you don't get anything else out of this message, get that. Be true with your commitment to God. Be a Daniel. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be a, one of the three Hebrew, Hebrew children and not defile ourselves with the things of this world. Father, Lord, thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord, for Daniel and the example he set. Thank you, Lord, for the example that the three Hebrew young men set. They were yielded to you. They were devoted to you. They were committed to you. And, Lord, we are the same today. Help us to be Daniels in, in our lives. And when we say we are committed to you, Lord, help us to stand on that commitment. Never yield, never Never compromising, but taking a stand. And if there ever was a time in the world, today is the day we need to take a stand. And Father, just help us here at Fairview Baptist Church to take that stand today. And I pray, Lord, that it would go out throughout, that, throughout this community, throughout this whole area, that we are true to our commitment to the Lord God. We take our stand for Him. 
Boys, I look around this congregation. I don't see anyone that I know, Lord, that's not uh, saved. But you taught me a long time ago. That's not my business. That's your responsibility, Lord. And, but I'll pray if there's one here under the sound of my voice, Lord, that they would come to know Jesus today before it's everlastingly too late. I pray, Lord, if there's a young if there's a Christian here today, Lord, that needs to uh, recommit their lives, uh, to be like Daniel, to do more for you, Lord, uh, uh, tomorrow than they did yesterday. I pray they would come making that decision. Lord, if there's anyone here uh, today that needs to move membership, they would come. If you want them to serve you here at Fairview and, and uh, be with us as we uh, work this community and this whole area, leading people to the Lord Jesus. Any decision made, Lord, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. You are the only one worthy to receive it. I pray this prayer in the, uh, the most precious name that I know, and that name being Jesus. Amen.